Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can, you can have your seat. So I have a message for every single person here going through anything. You know, in your life, in your work, your business, there might be times when you just feel like you want to give up. But I have just a message for you this morning and uh, just listen. I know it's all you got to just be strong And it's a fight just to keep it together, together I know you think that you are too far gone But hope is never lost Hope is never lost yeah. Just hold on and don't let go yeah. Hold on and don't let go Just take one step closer Put one foot in front of the other you get through this Just follow the light in the darkness You're gonna be okay Yeah, yeah You're gonna be okay You're gonna be just fine I know your heart is heavy from those nights Just remember that you are a fighter, a fighter You never know just what tomorrow holds And you're stronger than you know Yes, you, you're stronger than you know Yeah, hold on and don't let go Just hold on and don't let go Just stay one step closer Put one foot in front of the other You get through this Just follow the light and the darkness One step closer one foot in front of the other You get, you get through this Just follow the light and the darkness You're gonna be okay Now this is the part I love the most No matter what you're going through when it gets rough Just follow the light that is Jesus Yeah and when the night is closing in, don't give up and don't give in. This won't last, it's not the end, it's not the end. You're gonna be okay. When the night is closing in, don't give up and don't give in. This won't last, it's not the end, it's not the end. 
mistake One step closer One foot in front of the other You get through this Just follow the light in the darkness One step closer Put one foot in front of the other You get through this Just follow the light in the darkness You're gonna be okay Let's go. This perfect and real is what we talk about. What we talk about. All different comes to the house of the Lord. Ooh, yeah. There is liberty. You speak and learn. You speak and learn. All different yeah, yeah, comes, yeah, to, yeah, comes yeah, to the yeah, house yeah. of the Lord. It's about that time. It's the God hour, sharing ideas with your friends and foes. At the end of the day, y'all learn some more. He said, take us back to where we belong. I try to write a song as sweet as the Psalms. The tap on the bare arms, wearing on my heart, on my sleeve. And when we're in really God, I believe. Express yourself, no doubt I'm sure. Express yourself, express yourself, express yourself. Yeah. We got you covered. Express yourself, express yourself. Express yourself. Oh, yeah. We got you covered. Express yourself, express yourself, We got you covered. Express yourself, express yourself, express yourself. We got you covered. Good morning, church. Are you all excited? It's another expression Sunday that I'm sure you are expectant. And because Pastor has introduced our dignitary here, we know that we have a lot to expect. And we can look forward to a wonderful and entertaining and educative and informative expression Sunday. Pastor BC, you're welcome once again. Thank you very much. Please let personality with us and we know we are good. So get your pens, papers, and get your questions ready. So Pastor, um, we are talking, the topic today is take a lead. And um, the key word there is lead, leadership, lead, the leader. So I'm sure many of us, lead, the word lead or leadership or, or leader is not new to any one of us here. So um, there are several definitions. People have made quotes about it. So I would like Pastor to just tell us what exactly is leadership and um, what are the attributes of a good leader? Because everybody would want a good leader. So. I just okay. want, to, want to let us know. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to church. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I just want to make a confession, actually. I think I should make this confession. And uh, Pastor Kira has listened because he wants to hear the confession I'm going to make. You know, um, when, you are, when you are coming to Tower of David, even if you are angry, by the time you get here, um, your anger will turn to something else. <laughs> <laughs> we are laughing because you understand. I love who don't understand what I'm talking about, but that's the truth of the matter. So um, I think you should give yourself a round of applause. This is a fun place. This is a place to be. Honestly, um, this is a nice, nice place to be. And I thank God for what you're doing and for what God is helping you to do. And I'm sure that you do much more. Thank you very Jesus much, sir. Name. Thank you. So yes, and I and I like that song, that expression song. If I was just sharing with him. We just need more platforms. You guys are fantastic. I mean, fantastic. Fantastic. And by the grace of God, I'm, I'm committing that we're going to support whatever platform is going to work to get young people to... We, we just have to... We just have to fill the space. We just have to fill the space. Thank you, sir. So, talking about leadership, that has been my passion for a very long time. And let me just say, why is it my passion? When I was younger, not old yet, but when I was younger, maybe in my 20s, before I graduated, just about the time I was graduating and before, when I really understood what I was looking around and, and all that, I, I knew that what we had was not what we wanted to have. And we always were asking questions. And one of the answers that we always got is that the problem of our nation or the problem of our society is leadership. That was the answer. Ten years later, then I was in my 30s, 
about my theater and all that. And there, was, there were changes of people leading and all that. And then I, I was hearing the same thing. What's the problem? Is this? Is it, we have a problem of leadership. Hmm. Then I got to 40. <laughs> and I asked the question. And the same question was problem, problem with leadership. leadership. And then, I'm not yet 50, but I'm almost there. And what is the problem? We still have a problem of leadership. <laughs> so the question is, how come we have a problem that is so old and nobody is able to solve the problem? I think number one is definition. Yes. When you make the mistake of making someone who is a ruler a leader, you have a problem. Hmm. You have a problem. Rulers are different from leaders. leaders. According to the Bible, in Matthew, Jesus said, the rulers of this world are different from you. When you are a kingdom person, there is one thing that is infused in you. And I, I, I make bold to say this. When you are a kingdom person, there's one thing that is infused in you, and that is leadership. Now, look through Nigeria, and it's not by accident. Everyone who is talking leadership in Nigeria, really talking leadership, has a kingdom background. Look through the scriptures. you find it there. I mean, look through the country. you find it there. So when you talk about leadership, very simple, very simple definition. It's when you find the gift of God in your life and you are using it to serve others. Please back my word. Using it to serve Same. others. That's why Jesus said, anyone that is going to be great amongst you must be the servant of all. In other words, the more you serve, the greater you become. The more you serve, the greater you become. And I know when you hear the word, I don't, don't confuse the word serve with servant. There are two different words. He said, the more you serve, when you serve, you become great by service. What does that mean? When I find my gift, when I find my calling, when I find my area of expression, because this is the expression on the right. Yes. When I find my area of expression, and I use my area of expression to express my area of expression to serve people I am leading. That's why you find people who lead in different spheres of life. There are those who, live in who lead in engineering. There are those who lead in governance. There are those who lead in the music world. And the way you do anything is the way you do everything. So when you can lead very well in those spheres, you can go to any other sphere and really lead very well and just lead. So being a leader is that ability to use your gift to serve others, to influence others and get others to go in a direction that is positive for the good of everyone. Mm. Servant, service uh, that's one key word there because some as you mentioned a ruler is different from a leader a leader serves a leader goes the extra mile to put the people's um, needs and benefits ahead of his own so I just want to find out what are those attributes because some people might be asking as Christians we are all leaders according to what pastor said so what are those attributes in us or what are those attributes that we are supposed to exhibit as leaders? Very clear example. You see, the good thing is that we have an example. We have an example that we can follow. Very clear example that we can follow. I always ask myself a question. Why would somebody leave the throne in heaven and come to earth? Why would you leave a palace in Banana Island or Orange Island? Why would you, why would you leave that big house and then come and stay amongst people that you can easily call Low, 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 low life. That's, I think that's the word they use. Why would you do such a thing? That's leadership. Because the throne in heaven, and I know many of us don't want to die because we are not really sure. Because you know, you know what I'm talking about. You're not sure. Is it just here, this heaven. Is it really as they say? Is it really as good as they said? You know? And that's the problem. You see, until many of us, and I'm just digressing here, every one of us needs to go to the place of prayer where we can kill the fear of death. Until we kill the fear of death, we are not going anywhere. We have to kill that fear of death. It's very critical. And I'm, I'm not saying that I've killed it. Mm. And I'm being authentic here. I'm still praying about it. But we must get to the place where we kill the fear of death. Now, he gave us examples. Number one, leaders put others first. That's critical. Put others first. And I want you to look at it from your own sphere and ask yourself a question. Do I put others first in what I do? Do I put others first? And I will, I will interrogate the matter because let's bring it down to, to, to our level. Because you see, when I started, I talked about the problem that I saw or the problem that we were discussing that leadership is our problem. And then 
the people that I discussed with, some of them are in leadership today. I'm sure that some of the governors around us, in fact, we have a young governor. I think we have a governor or two who are less than 50 or so. Governor of Oyo State, I think. I don't know, but don't mention, no, let's not mention him now so that we will not throw stones. <laughs> but even the youngest governor is not the best. I stand to be corrected, but it doesn't seem to be the best. So it's not really about how young somebody is. It's about the values that the person carry. When you enter into leadership, is it for you or for them? Because, you see, leadership begins with you, but it's all about others. The truth of the matter is that a leader does not go for anything for himself. He's there totally, completely for others. That's why Jesus Christ made it very clear. That's, that's why I say we have an example. Jesus made it very clear that I lay down my life by myself. I can pick it up, but I lay it down my life, put myself down. I have every right to enjoy the best of what I should enjoy. I can be anywhere I want to be. I can do anything, but I have decided to go with the value that says that people come before me. So that's number one. You have to always put people first. That's equality. Now, when I talk about leadership, I ask some questions. How is the person growing? I see growing. Because if you don't grow, you can't go. I see growing. And when you look around you, you discover that a lot of the people that we call leaders are not growing. Ask them what they have, what they found. You would not be able to get some very, very deep insight. In fact, recently I, I was watching a program and, and then somebody was talking. I don't want to call organizations so that I would not hit some things together. But, but he was supposed to be working in an organization that has to do with diaspora. The way the person was speaking, I said, there's nobody who would listen to you. But of course, they didn't care. What they bother about is their own space. They're not looking at anybody. They're looking at their own space. So the moment you start looking at yourself, looking at you, thinking about you, then you have lost leadership. Then, of course, if you are not growing, then that's the problem. That's why you see Jesus Christ, he had everything. He, he came in from, from heaven. He's the son of God. He's also God. But he went first of all to the house of a carpenter. Why? He went to the house of a carpenter, in my estimation, because he knew that everything about his life was going to have to do with wood and nails. So he needed to understand the system. And that's very critical for us. If you want to lead, then you've got to be growing. You've got to be growing in the area of, number one, the area of character. That's where many of us miss it. In all sincerity. In all sincerity. You see, if you are not growing your person, you will, you, will out, you will destroy your profession. That's the problem many don't understand. I'll talk about the president. There's a president who did very well in the financial world. He made money. He's very popular in the financial world. Then he decided to run into politics. But there was one thing that he failed to understand. That the way you communicate in the financial world is different from the way you communicate in the people business world. And by the time he started communicating... They didn't allow him to enjoy more than one time. You know who I'm talking about by now. If you are, you know, let me not mention him. But that's the truth. So you've got to be able to grow yourself. If you are going to be in leadership, grow yourself in those five areas of your life. You've got to grow yourself in your faith because it's going to be tested. Grow yourself in your faith. It's going to be tested. Grow yourself in your family life and friend life. Because you see, the moment you enter into leadership, your friends are going to come around. Your friends for real and your friends for fake. And that's the problem I see with many of us in Nigeria. When your friend wins the election, for example, as local government chairman, ah, remember me in your kingdom. What are you telling him? He should go and sort you out. Check me out. To you know, remember me. We were together. You understand? So let some of the butter also reach my bread. Mm. Even though you, you didn't do anything <laughs> to deserve it. I like your interjection so that when they read it, they know that it's me and you are talking, not only me. <laughs> it's not only me. We are talking together. <laughs> so we are in this together. <laughs> Honestly, that's the thing. And that's what we say. The moment your friend enters into a place of authority, you will tell him, Do you remember me, you know, we're together here, guy. We suffer together. Now you are going to enjoy. So for many of us, and, and that's the mentality we carry. For many of us, we have sold this mentality that leadership is enjoyment. Yes. True or false? True. 
True. We... So that's why people that go into offices of leadership, they are not going there for anybody. They are going there to okay. enjoy. So a man goes into that office with a Volkswagen, and the following day, he jumps from a Volkswagen, and the next thing you see is a Prado. If you even do a Prado, he might not do Prado. He will look for something else. The next thing he's thinking about is, how am I going to get a house in Abuja? I have to also have a house in Abuja. The moment you start thinking like that, let me have a house in Abuja. And after having a house in Abuja, I need to have a house in London. After having a house in London, I need to have a house in U.S. After having a house in U.S., I need to have a place in Dubai. After having a house in Dubai, then I will need to have a house in the moon. As long as he's pursuing the agenda, man, you can be very sure that he will not pursue the agenda of the people. We are good to know that he can't pursue the agenda of the people. So we've got to be growing ourselves in the area of our faith, our friend, in the area of our fitness. That's also very important. You can't go into leadership and then turn your six pack to one pack. <laughs> you can't go into leadership and then because of that, because there's so much food there, you have eaten all the food and you have forgotten that, uh, who you are. You've got to grow yourself, grow your character. Grow yourself, grow your communication skills, grow yourself, grow your leadership skills, get understanding in the things that are relevant. Know the things that are happening around you. And it's many of us these days, we do a lot of talking, we listen to a lot of things, and it's very good. But please, spend some time to hear what's going on around you and what's going on in other spheres of the world. Don't box yourself in one area. I think one of the advice that somebody gave me a long time ago that I appreciate is know something about, I mean, know everything about something and know something about everything. everything. Be able to manage those first. As we grow older, you need it. Because when you get into a leadership position, somebody will bring those things to you. That's why I like the, the, the pastoral assignments. When I, I don't know of today, but at the time I became a pastor, I now realize that a pastor is not just a pastor. A pastor is a doctor. A pastor is a midwife. A pastor is a counselor. A pastor is a construction engineer. A pastor is a mechanic. When people's car got bad in those days, they would call pastor. Pastor, my car is bad. <laughs> what can I do about it? So I got to this one that I needed to understand a lot of things about as much as I can understand. So growth is important. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. I've picked so many things just from these few minutes you've spoken. Leadership and humility. Those are some things that go with leadership. Selflessness, humility, growth. Very important. So thank you very much, sir. Um, I want to find out, you know, there are different styles of leadership and uh, different benefits of each style because I think each situation warrants different styles of leadership. So I want to know, what are the styles of leadership and... Um, are there specific situations? What are those specific situations where some of those styles are uh, beneficial? That's um, two. Then, are there, um, is it possible to exhibit for an individual to exhibit different styles of leadership? I'm going to answer the question in two ways. I'm okay. going to interrogate the question in two ways. Okay. One is, I'm going to share what I believe. I'm going to also try and share what, what's, what's in the books. Okay, sir. For me, there's no style of leadership. That's what I believe. There's no, for me, there's no style. Leadership is leadership. That's what I believe. Leadership is leadership. There's no style. Who you are is who you bring to the place. You bring yourself to the place. You can't be dual. You can't be double. Now, I know that, I'm talking about the books now, I know that there are several things like autocratic leadership, um, what are the other ones? I don't even know the bureaucratic, um, transformational, charismatic, laser fair. If leadership is not transforming anything, it is not leadership. In fact, my, my, my normal statement is any leadership that is not bringing change needs to be changed. Mm. Normal. Positive change. If a leadership is not bringing, yeah, right. If the leadership is not bringing positive change, that leadership needs to be changed immediately. Because why are you in leadership? You are in leadership to bring change. That's leadership. It's different from management. You can maintain the system. You can measure what's going on. But when you are in leadership, you are supposed to bring change. So things to be changing on a regular basis. If, if you are same, same, same old, same old, then that's not leadership. Leadership is always thinking. Leadership initiates. Leadership creates. So you, you are supposed to be bringing change on a regular basis. I don't know about you, but I get sick and tired of same old, same old. Master, don't like it. I love you, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> There's God, you, it has to be changed. And you see now, I said something here and I think you need to put it somewhere. Mm. 
the way you do anything is the way you do everything. everything. Sisters in the house, you can't get married and serve your husband the same way every day. If you do it by the time you get into government, you serve government the same way every day. Change your style. I'm not talking about changing for the sake of and that, that's even if the same thing goes with brothers. You can't just be doing the same thing the same way all the time. It's it said that when you do the same thing the same way all the time and you expect something different, that is insanity. insanity. There are too many mad men on our streets. Too many mad people on our streets. They are mad in the wrong way. I wish we can have more positively mad people. Yes. <laughs> because there are those who are negatively mad and there are those who are positively mad. I am positively mad. Making a difference. I'm making a difference. Yes. So you've got to, every day, down, you, you see, you can't allow people to come to your space and leave your space the same way they came. If you're a Jesus follower, you've got to be like him. Jesus was a leader. Nobody encountered Jesus and left Jesus the same. Either by his words or by his action. He will always make a difference in that person's life. They brought a woman to him one day. This woman was caught in the very act of an adultery. Look at the way a leader judges a matter. They caught her in the very act of adultery and they brought her in. And normally, if you catch somebody in the act of adultery, what do you do? You kill the person. But look at a leader. Wisdom. He didn't speak. He put his hand on the floor and he was right. Then he got up and he said, if there's one of you who has not committed the same offense, or in, in, who has never offended before, throw the first stone, then others can join you. So next time you want to throw a stone against somebody, ask yourself, have I committed an offense before? If you have not, then throw the stone. But if you have not, and you want to throw the stone, go and look for somebody who has not committed an offense, so that you can throw the first stone, then you can now throw the other stones. <laughs> Think about that before you throw anybody out. But you know, he did that, and then when he lifted up, he said, everybody had gone. There are so many questions in my heart. Number one, the woman was caught in the act of adultery. What about the man that was committing it with her? <laughs> so I'm sure Jesus saw it and said, look at the wickedness of this man. They want to kill one and save the other. That's the problem that we have a lot of time in leadership. People want to kill one and save the other. So when it is wrong for one person, but it is right for the other person, that's not leadership. Mm. That's... Think about that. <laughs> wrong for one person but right for the other person that's not leadership so and, I, and i'm saying this now because i don't want us to i don't know how much time we have really but you see i don't want us to think that oh i'm a leader only when i become the governor of the state oh i'm a leader when i become the 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 local government chairman i'm speaking to you right now as you are sitting down looking at me you are a leader because leadership is influence every day of your life you influence four people a minimum of four people. That's why you are four people away from anybody in this world. Four people away. And that's not theory. Four people away from anybody in this world. If you're in this room now, you want to read, you want to see Pastor ID. There's one person I know that can take you to him. If you can convince him that you have a strong enough reason. Am I correct? You're correct. If you want to see the vice president, there's one person here who can connect you to Pastor ID, who can connect you to the vice president. So can you see that you are only four people away from the president? Because if you meet that one person who, can who you can convince to take you to Pastor ID, who you cannot convince to take you to the vice president, and you can convince him, you take you to the president. So every day of your life, you're actually influencing somebody. somebody. The question is how are you influencing them? Do you know that there's somebody who is talking, talking the way they are talking because of the way you are talking? It might be your younger brother. Even your friends. There might be a friend of yours whose mannerism has now begun to look like you. You are influencing the person. So in the same way, we can make it a positive influence. Well, so at our own little quarters, where we are. You see, that's the way we can make leadership happen in Nigeria. I'm telling you the absolute truth. Leadership will not happen by the, by the please permit me to say, Jack Bebeda is already there. No. It will happen by you and I, the younger generation, who begin to express the leadership values that we can see around us. When you begin to change things around your quarters, simply, you might not be able to change the world, but you can change one person. When you begin to look around you, I remember I said something in church one day, very, very, very funny. I was just preaching. I said, I said, you know the definition of a poor man? They said, okay, they want to know. I said, the poor man is anybody who buys a car, and he's driving and he bumps into a pothole, pours water on somebody else on the street and cannot stop to say sorry. 
Hey. That statement, Paul. I didn't... <laughs> That statement, I didn't know how powerful that statement was until about a year later, a lady came. Mm. And I'll, maybe for that, I mean, her husband is the one that did um, Up Not. I don't know if you have watched that movie, Up Not. Mm -hmm. Just to tell you that uh, it's her husband that did that, that movie. The lady came and then said, I never knew what impact can be held on me until when I, she heard that statement in the midweek service and she began to apply it in her life. And that statement, simply put, means that I'm not better than you. Yes. I may be bigger than you. I may be brighter than you. But I'm not better than you. I do not believe that there are underprivileged people. I do not believe that there's anybody who is less privileged. We are all equally privileged. I may not have found my privilege. That doesn't mean that I'm underprivileged. So I don't treat anybody as underprivileged. That's the truth. In leadership, I, I don't give people my used clothes. I mean, just last yesterday, I, I just went into my wardrobe and I picked up clothes that I discovered that they were there, but I had not used it. Some of them came with their label. This morning, I have a shirt on my table, uh, I mean, on my bed. I just called somebody, please get to the house and pick it up. So it's not after I've used it. No, 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 no. I give them exactly what I feel I should be giving. Mm. That's the way it goes. So in our own small quarters, you've got to be looking at how you are leading because you are going to, you see, you're going to be great. How you do anything, I like to repeat, how you do anything is, is how, how you, you do, do everything. everything. Check it out. How you do anything is how you do everything. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you very much. Hope you have your questions down. I'm sure a number of people would like to ask Pastor a number of things. This is a, a great opportunity because we don't see Pastor Bitsy here all the time. Oh. So, please, if you have your question, please write it down now. This is a great opportunity to interact with Pastor Bitsy. Please, thank you. Yes, okay. Thank God. Someone is already... There's a question here already. Okay, okay. this is um, an announcement, sorry. For um, 199EE Silver Pujo 406, please. You need to repark. Thank you. So going back to what we're, we're discussing. Pastor, yes, we, we've talked about everyone being le a, a leader at some, as in by our own, um, just everyone being a leader. So I want to find out. We've had prominent leaders, notable leaders, Barack Obama, and Nelson Mandela, late Nelson Mandela, and several other people who have exhibited leadership traits based on what you said. Then we have... Uh, other people that are born into royal family. So I want to find out, are people born leaders? Are there people that, you know, they already have leadership traits in them when they were born? So anytime a leadership position comes up, they're the ones that will always go in. Because you find out that even some people right from primary school, that the first person that will um, answer questions, that the person that will be the class prefect, um, they'll be the head girl, all those kind of things. Are there people that are born with leadership traits or do we develop them? Okay. The question people normally will ask is, are leaders born or are leaders made? Mm -hmm. And the question is, is there anybody who was not born? <laughs> Everybody was born now. So, <laughs> so whether you're a leader, but, but this is it. When you talk about somebody being born, let me use that example, please, because this is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this like this. Okay. When you talk about somebody born in a royal family, there's a, there are certain protocols, there are certain ethics that happen in the palace. There's a way things are done in the palace that is different from the way things are done outside the palace. I hope you understand that. And that will explain to you why God had to take David to the palace after anointing him. Hmm. The anointing was not enough to make him a king. He needed certain protocols of the palace for him to now become a king. So he went to the palace as a half boy to understand the protocol of the palace so that when he got into the palace, he would be able to exhibit himself as a palace. That will also let you know why God allowed Joseph to go from the pit to the house of Potiphar because Potiphar was in government so that he could understand the protocols of governance. By the time he enters it, he was ready for it. The truth of the matter is that it is not being born royalty that makes you a leader. It's actually understanding the complexities of royalty that makes you a leader. Mm. When people are born in a royal place, they begin to pick up those traits 
Because they see it exemplified. If you understand royalty in the real sense of royalty, not what we have in some places today, there are certain things that happen. There's a way you talk. There's a, you are taught so many things. Etiquette. So the etiquette and all those things are coming in. You are, are going through that kind of a school in that space. You understand discipline. They will tell you that there's a time to eat. There's a time not to eat. People eat at tables. And many of us don't understand why people eat at tables. Those are cultures that we need to begin to imbibe. When people eat at tables, actually, look at the Bible. The Bible says my, her children, they surround her table. They surround her table. What's he talking about? The table is not just a place of eating. I know they tell us that we should not talk when we are eating. But did you understand that Jesus Christ made the greatest statements while they were at table? The greatest statement. The, instatement, the, 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 the promotion of, 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 um, of Peter, Peter happened there. You are right, sir. The promotion of Judas also happened at the table. <laughs> the re-promotion of Peter happened when they were eating fish. Great things happened there. So there are, there are ethics. There are things that they pick at the table that begin to build that leadership capacities in them. They understand discipline. They understand the way you dress, the way you appear, that you can't just appear anyhow. They pick up those things there. They understand how to talk and how to receive guests. You know, many of us don't know how to receive guests. That's the truth. Many of us don't know how we should receive guests and who should receive who at any point in time. But these things are taught them. So nobody is, in my view, nobody is born a leader. But there are certain persons that have some traits that you look at and say, okay, this trait is good for leadership. People that are kind of dominant. You know, there are people that are dominant. They can, they can really express themselves. They can come out boldly and all that. But you know what? I, 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 I teach leadership. I do leadership. I've come to understand that the best leaders actually didn't even have that trait. They, they actually didn't even training. have that trait. Check, check them out. No, they, they, they just come out sometimes and express courage. Sometimes they, have, they are shy. They, are tim they look like they are timid. The best of them. They look like they don't know what they are supposed to do, but they come out with fa fantastic result results, and then you are wondering. Why? Because when it's time for you, that's why I said the issue of styles. There are times when you are supposed to come out dominant. There are times when you are going to be a people person. You are going to be likable. There are times when you want to be communicative and communicate very well. And that does not mean talking so much. It actually means having the right word, being expressed in the right time and the right space. So there are times when those things come out and you use them. But that doesn't mean that somebody was actually born, born a, leader. a leader. Our styles in life, sorry, our, mm. our styles in life are learned by three things. Number one is your hereditary is there. It forms 3% of you who you are. Number two is your role models. Role models are very, very critical. The people that you look at as role models. And then number four, number three is your environment. If you were born in another town, in another state, in another country, you are likely to be behaving a little differently because you would have picked up the culture of that environment. Thank you very much. Lots of things that we've... Please, um, are there any questions? Please, I would like someone to... Yes, okay. Please, First of, ask, please ask, ask questions. Any question. If I don't have the answer, I am very sure that somebody here will have the answer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, Pastor, thank you so much for all that you have been saying. Certainly very salient points. Now, you have talked about many things about leadership, and I see you drawing quite a lot of, a lot of uh, examples, a lot of biblical references from the Master Jesus Christ. Now, in this uh, our own uh, environment where we find ourselves, and you also talk. To be that change that we have always wanted to, to, to have that change that we have always wanted to have. Thank you, sir. The, 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 the thing is, there are two sides of Jesus that everybody must understand. There are two sides of Jesus that we all must understand. There's the person of Jesus that gives you salvation, 
And then there's the principle of Jesus that gives you life. Many times we mistake it. The unfortunate thing is that in my view, I might be wrong, but in my view, I think that the church has expressed the person of Jesus so much and left out the principles of Jesus. A lot of times in church, you have to forgive me, but this is what I believe. In church, we talk about miracles and miracles and miracles. But do you know that God never designed life to, live on mir- to be lived on miracles? I'll give you an example. When he fed them, and many of them ate, 5,000 of them ate, what did he say to the disciples or the apostles? Gather, gather the gather fragment. The How can the one who can produce bread all the time tell you to gather the fragment? He was telling you something. Don't Miracles gives you an overflow. It is wisdom that keeps it overflowing, ever flowing. Mm. The wisdom of gathering the fragments. So I think the role that the church can really play is the role of advocacy. That's very clear. Advocacy on several levels. Advocacy in the area of letting people understand the values that leadership brings. And the church has played a lot, and I'm not going to run it down. The church has done a lot in this country. A lot. Opened our eyes to how to save. Opened the eyes of people that didn't know anything about, um, I mean, there was a time that the only message we used to hear in church at some time was that you should go and buy shares. You remember that time? But okay, everybody was buying shares until the thing crashed. Because they told us to buy share, but they didn't tell us that we should understand the wisdom of how the share plays. So that you know when to enter and when to come out. Those are the things, those are the dynamics. So you've got to understand those dynamics. And and that's what the church needs to, I think the church can do. Aside from that, the church can also play advocacy, not get involved. In, in, In my own sphere, I think that the church should get to the position where the church can call leadership to order. That's the truth. We must be able to say, okay, no, let's call leadership to order. But a lot of times, many times we fail in that uh, dimension. But uh, 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 now the church is humans. The church is people. The church leadership are people. And everybody will only do what people know. If they don't know better, they cannot do better. And that's my take on that matter. But in our own sphere, we can do that as the church. We can make that happen. For example, please, everyone here, if you know that you are not on the age of voting, during the last election, please go and get your PVC. If you have to sleep in INEL to get it, get it. Sleep there. After all, you have slept in several places. You have slept in vigil. So you can just tell Pastor, okay, please, our next vigil is INEL. Let's go and do it there. I need to get my PVC because I want to be part of this process. Yes. You get Very what I'm important. saying? Then you've got to also make change. If we have systems that are destructive, you've got to say, no, this thing cannot be destroyed. I mean, I like the last process. Nobody wanted to destroy anything. That was fantastic. Because it belongs to us. So those are the things that we can do. And when you say church, now I don't want to look at church leadership now. I'm trying to look at us as the church. Because it's easy for somebody to say, let's stand up there and say this and say that. But it doesn't really make that much difference as when we do some things amongst oh, ourselves act. one by one. Yes. One on one. It makes much more difference. You have influence here. So great influence here in this church amongst people that are sitting with you. So I think that that's what the church can really do. We can play that role of advocacy. I, 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 it's difficult. Sometimes we expect, I can't, I can't stand up in my church now as a pastor and say, everybody go and vote for this one man. It might not be that nice because if there are political parties, I will have members of this political, I mean, I will have them. And I cannot divide my house, right? Yes. Supposing you are in PDP now and Pastor K is in uh, APC. APC. And Pastor uh, uh, Shergo is like me. He's in Youth Independent. Youth Democratic Party. <laughs> and, and then I now come and say, everybody go and vote for this party. The rest will say, ah, why are you being partial? That's the problem. So you, can't, you really can't do that. But you see, it's, and, and this is my, my thinking. Please forgive me. It's not about party. It's about person. Yes, yes. It's about. I think we begin to think about that. It's not really about party. It's about person. Uh-huh. See, see, see. If a man is a thief and he is in your father's house, he will steal your father's money. <laughs> if the man is a thief and he go and get a job in a bank, he will steal bank money. If the man is a thief and they make him a pastor, he will steal church money. It's about character. It is not about the money. It's about the person. The person is a thief. Wherever he is, he will steal. So I think we should begin to look at the character and the quality of the person much more than the party. Than the party. Thank you very much, sir. I hope I, I yes, tried sir. with the question. So I, from everything you said, it means uh, leadership requires a lot of um, development and growth yeah. 
you need to develop yourself. So as individuals, we are leaders, but I know that in order to, um, we have some questions, but I will take one, just this one. In order to uh, be able to um, um, exhibit the maximum um, benefits of leadership or give people the maximum benefit of leadership we have to offer, we need to develop ourselves. So what are those things we can do to equip ourselves for leadership? Um, yeah. In, okay. and make ourselves available for okay. leadership. I, I, will, I, will, I will share with you my personal example. Like I told you, I discovered that there are problems in leadership and what on, and I wanted to solve the problem. Honestly, I really want to solve the problem. I'm doing the leader I can do today, and I don't, make, I don't need to make so much noise about what I'm doing or what I'm not doing, but I mean, by the grace of God, God giving me grace very soon, I'm going to be launching a leadership campaign. I, I want to take... 2,500 teenagers through wow. the basic principle of leadership before my next birthday. That's fantastic. One of the things I want to do. Um, of course, I've been doing some other things on the ground here and there, trying also to express it. Now, before I got there, I, I realized there are certain things that happened to me, and I want to advise you. Before you get into positions of leadership, get a personal development plan for yourself. How are you? You see, the question I ask people now is not how are you doing. My question now is how are you growing? Growing. How are you growing? See, I'm not interested in your present condition. I'm interested in your future pro uh, condition. And that comes by the progression you are making. Life is an inside-out affair. If you don't travel within, you will go without. Maybe wow. you don't understand. Let me say it again. If you don't travel within, you will go without. Going without means you have nothing. You've got, it's from inside you. And please, you need to understand. Growth happens from inside you out. Look, Jesus never did anything for anybody except going into them. And I'll give you examples. When Adam didn't have a wife and he was looking for a wife, what do you think Jesus could have done? I mean, God could have yes. done. Could have created another woman. woman. But no, creating another woman will not help her because something that comes from abroad may not make your life broad. Hey. <laughs> Stop. So he said to her there, he, he said to the man there, and then go to bed. When he went to bed, he took a rib mm -hmm. from you, and out of that rib, he formed a woman. Who named her woman? Adam. Adam. Because the moment he saw something that looked like him, he was able to quickly embrace what looked like him. It was easy for him to say, ah, This one looks like me, and then he embraced it right there and then. When a woman came and said, I don't have food in my house, blah, blah, what did the, the prophet ask her? What, do you, what do you have in your house? So the question is, what do you have in your head? What do you have in your heart? What do you have in your hand? You already have something that is there. All you need to do is begin to develop it. And let me say something here. Because this issue of teaching miracles sometimes in church has created a problem for us. God never gives people finished products. Yes. And I say it again. God never gives people finished products. How do I know that? In Genesis, God created the heaven and the earth, and it was formed, it was void. How can God create something that will be formless, void, and dark? And then God began to do some work. Let there be light. Water, go here. You go there. This one, go there. That one, go there. Bring fish out of the water. Get animals on the bed. Let the herbs come forth. He created everything. And then when he got to a place, he created man, and he said, this is very good. I was traveling one day by road. I was going to Kaduna. And I looked at the thick forest and how bad it was. And I said to God, God, tell me something. How can you call this good? He said, I know your problem. Your problem is that you're looking at the performance. You're not looking at the potential. I had to bow down before God that day and say, wow, this is awesome. You're looking at the performance. You're not looking at the potential. So you've got to be go begin to look at yourself and grow yourself from within. Look inward and grow yourself from within. I've mentioned some things. Grow your character. What are the things that I did? One... I was a student. I was a student of life. Illiteracy, illiteracy is graduating from university and stopping reading. You stop reading after you graduate, that's illiteracy. You are actually, like somebody said the other day, an educated illiterate. illiterate. Because you were able to, you grew, you came out of the university and then you stopped reading. Is there anybody here who is, who is, who, who, who is working in a field that you didn't study in the university? Anybody? Thank you, my sister. Can I ask you a question? Am I free? What did you study in school? Microbiology. So what are you doing now? You work with an ISP. What do you mean by ISP now? So that Telecoms. I can. Telecoms. Telecoms. Now, you, you studied microbiology, and then you are working with a telecoms provider. Microbiology. Telecoms. <laughs> so, please, ma, what happened to all the microbiology that they taught you? You can't find it. You see? Now, let me tell you that I, I, I don't know whether they read in the profile, but I, I studied chemistry. <laughs> I 
I studied chemistry. And one of the things I learned is that they taught me that things are taught me theory. When they finished teaching me, they now told me that it has expired. Why are you <laughs> teaching me something that I don't need for my life? Why, why are you clogging my brain? Why are, you, why are you giving me something that I don't need for life? Why are you troubling my brain for crying out loud? The Y, the X, the D. Uh, hello, if you are, I know, I know there are students here. If you are a student here, come out with your first class. Oh, yes, yes. If you are a student here, come out with your first class. Even with the expired theory. <laughs> but when you are done with the theories, please, now come into the arena of life and then begin to develop the things that will make you live life. For example, they didn't teach us leadership in the university. There is yet a curriculum for leadership in Nigeria and you are expecting to have leaders. How can you have leaders when you don't have a curriculum for leadership? Is it possible, sir? Can I stand up? Of course, sir. <laughs> is it possible that I come to you now? And then, um, no, not you. I come to somebody now who is in the hospital. And I say, look, I'm a healer. I've been dreaming of being a healer all my life. In fact, God has called me to be a healer. So I'm here to heal you. What is your problem? You see, I can heal. I can heal anything. In fact, I can cure your disease right now. And then you ask me, say, I'm ready to do the surgery, please. And then I say, please, which school did you go to? Say, no, 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 don't worry about that. I didn't study medicine at all, at all. I am just here. I can do it by faith. It's okay. Don't let me. Will you stay there and allow the bench to do surgery? <laughs> exactly. So how can you now afford to carry your life and give it into the hands of somebody who never studied leadership? There may not be a screw on it, but what are you doing to study it? Are you learning it at all? Let me digress. Are you learning how to be a wife? Or you want to be a wife by nature? You are in trouble. Are you learning how to be a husband? Or you want to be a husband by nature? You are in trouble. There are two ways of life. There is the nature and there is the nurture. nurture. Don't forget that one. So you've got, to, you've got to work on those areas. Be a reader. They, they normally say readers are leaders. And, I, and I'm telling you this. I know we're in a different kind of setting. For me, I had so many books. I, my, library, my library is full. And by the grace of my son, he, said, he asked me one day, he said, have you read all these books? And I told him that, well, I think that I've read about 70% of the books in my library. And, and that's the truth. I go around with books. Check my car right now, there's a book there. But I know many of us don't like reading books. So what do you do? Why don't you go into audio, audio books? books? Audiobooks. And listen on the go. Listen on the go. Podcasts. Listen on the go. Nation building. What do you know about nation building? Have you read the story about um, 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 what's the name of that, that beautiful place now? Singapore. How did they turn around? How is it that Chinese are taking over our streets right now? How come Chinese be taking over our streets and they are the ones constructing things for us in this country and in other African countries? What happened? What did they do? How come Dubai is where Dubai is today? How did they do it? What happened? Because if you don't study these things at the end of the day, you might not be able to express it when you have that position. See, it's easy. I was on, a, uh, I was, uh, I was on a, an Instagram live chat yesterday. Not me now, I was watching. It was uh, Fela Drote and uh, Tonya Kool. I don't know if any of you encountered where I live. Antonio said something. He said, you know, we used to think that we know politics until we enter into it. <laughs> That's what he said. And I have always been saying that thing. That it's easy for you to say, I can do it. In 10 days, I will give you a road. Ask the governor of Lagos. In one year time, you will see what we have in Lagos. Then coronavirus came and just knocked this. He said, ah, okay, I don't know this and one. I don't understand. Came. And then answers came and the man is now wondering, what am I going to do next? God will help him in Jesus' name. Amen. But that's the truth. So, Thank you very much, sir. Uh, yes, we have a few people with questions. Praise now, the let, Lord. Let me say, please, I don't know what you want to ask, but let me say this. If you want to actually be in leadership in certain areas, there's one key attribute that you must not leave out. And what is it? You must have a mentor. Mm. Now, please, a mentor is not somebody that gives you money. A mentor is somebody that shows you their method. And their method is not to be taken sacrosanct. Their method is to be refined by you. Experience is the great teacher. I know in the church we say that's not true, but I've learned better. Actually, it is not experience that is the best, great teacher. It is evaluated experience. So mentors will give you their evaluated experience to work with. So you need a deliberate. I'm not talking about haphazard mentoring. I made that mistake before, but now I'm deliberate. Deliberate mentoring where you are listening to somebody once in a week. My mentor, one of my mentors, John Maxwell, and when I call him my mentor, it's not that I read his book. He's actually my mentor. I have interaction. On a monthly basis, I have interaction. Now, one of the things he did when he was a pastor, 
is that when he was a pastor and he was not doing well, he did something. He calls a pastor that is doing well and he says, would you be able to spend an hour with me if I pay you $100? And the pastor says, sure, let's have lunch. And I mean, for $100 in 1970, man, that's not small money. And he was willing to invest that money. So he, was, he would give the $100 and you sit down with the person. And, the person, and when he gets there, he begins to ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. When you meet a mentor, please ask questions, ask questions. That's very important. Don't tell them what you know. Ask them what they know. Who do you know that I know? What do you know that I know? What is it that you are thinking about now? What are you learning? How are you growing? Did you take my... Some of you are looking at me. Take note of those questions. Those are powerful questions. Those are powerful questions that I'm sharing with you. If, if I ask you that question in a one-on-one -on -one session with me, it will take you 30 minutes to be able to answer that question. And I'm not joking. I, that's what I do. On the side, apart from being a pastor, I'm a coach. And I'm coaching a number of people now in the area of leadership quietly. And I'm asking them those questions. How are you growing? Who do you know that I know? I need to know. What do you know that I need to know? What are you learning now? How are you growing now? What books are you reading? Who is impacting your life? What are you thinking about the future in the next five years? What are you thinking about 2021? Ask those questions and you get answers from them. But be deliberate. Don't just do it at hazard. Don't run it anyhow. If you're in the world of music, if that is where you are, is there somebody who has done well in that field that you cannot interact with? Would you be willing to pay some money? Would you be willing to sell your shoe? And use, instead of buying that shoe that you want to use to show yourself on Instagram, you don't need Instagram yet. See, you don't need to brand yourself. When you are good, the brand will appear. Yeah. Brand, 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 brand. Let me brand, let me brand. It's good to brand. There's nothing wrong with branding. But before you brand, be good. Get good first. If I didn't say brand. anything, please, can I say that again? Get good first. When you are good, the brand will show. Get good first. Somebody was to ask a question over there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your imparted, impart, impartation statement. Very, very key. Um, I discovered a problem some years back. And it's a very serious problem. For, for every one of us, either we are old or we are young. And the problem is self-identity. Because I discovered it some years back, and I see that it really affects me. And... I thank God that I go open my eyes on time. Why? Because if we think back, even to our secondary school level, we all do follow, follow from one class to class. Nobody can say, okay, I'm just a story. I want to study science. I want to study this. We all do follow friends to enter that same class, science class. Even commercial class, we follow, follow. And the same problem continue to higher institutions. We follow friends to choose a course. Or we are enforced by a parent to choose that course. Or by influence of somebody. Or maybe I don't want to stay at home. Let me just get involved to our institution. And that problem continues. And that same problem affects our economics. Because we, after when we graduate, we cannot defend the course we did. And at the same time, that problem continues lingering even to the area of leadership. How? Because I studied a course. I become a graduate. Well, because I have an influence with some people, I have a connection, I become a leader somewhere. And you cannot defend what you did, you cannot defend yourself. And that continues. Then I discovered in Asia country, they discovered that children for the childhood. In fact, in the Japan and North Korea and some of the parts of South Korea, they Told they nurture their children based on how they discover who they have. Pastor Sugar, please, yes. we need to be Yes, I'm, I'm going to my questions. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. So, they discover their children and they put them in the traits of their potential. You grow in that area. When you grow in that area, they link you to where you fulfill your destiny. Mm. And that helps their leadership. Praise the Lord. Now, my question is, in the aspect of Africa, in what way can we read the step of self-identity as a part of cre creating a very good and effect effective economics? Not only e economist and effective leadership. Thank right you. from our local environment to the international community. Thank you very much, Pastor Sugar. Praise the Lord. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Pastor, that's a very, very... Please, I, I would be very glad to have everyone's attention at this point in time. Thank you very much. I, 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 really, I, I need to appreciate you. That's a very fundamental question. Very important. 
And it actually has damaged so many people from where they are coming from. That's the truth of the matter. And everyone needs to actually address that matter. Let me confess. I had that problem for a very long time of my life. Even after I became a pastor, I still had that problem. I had to tackle the problem deliberately to be able to get an answer. When they ask you a question, who are you? What's your answer? I'm asking, who are you? The answer varies, depending on... Yeah, the answer definitely will vary. But I need you to answer the answer to yourself. Don't even tell us. The question is, who are you? Have you been introduced to yourself before? Do you actually know who you are? Because if I ask some of us, maybe not all of us, who are you? You will stand up and say, I am Pastor B.C. Akonde. Sorry, sir, that is your identification. That's not your identity. That's why you will never hear me get to a place and say, who are you? And I say, I'm Pastor B.C. No, 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 I won't say that. I would rather probably say I'm B.C. Akonde. That's okay. I'm not Pastor B.C. Akonde. Pastor is what I do. That's not who I am. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's fundamentally based on our understanding. That's why whenever I come around and tell people I don't want anybody to ever call me daddy in the Lord or daddy in the eye. They don't know what I know. I know. I know what I know. They don't know what I know. So they think that maybe I'm just saying that because I'm young or because I'm trying. No, no, no. I know what I know. I cannot. I won't allow anybody to confuse my identity with my identification. Let me go back to the Bible, please, if you permit me. Sure. They asked some questions in the Bible. John, who are you? Are you Elijah? Are you, are you the mother? He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare you the way of the Lord. What's he telling you? I have a purpose. I have a purpose. That's what he's telling you. I have a purpose. So when they were asking him, who are you? He would have just boasted. I mean, if they say you are Elijah, he'd say, ah! Yes, I'm the one who came in the spirit of Elijah. Don't you know me? I am the PA to the AGO in charge of admin and personnel. I am also the PICP Youth Province 1. That's me. I'm the one. So please open the way as I'm coming. Excuse me, sir. If your name alone cannot open the way and you need your father's name or your title to open the way, you have not started. Pastor. So, final advice. Be deliberate about finding out your identity. If you need someone to help you, please let them help you. I don't know how you did your own, but if you need someone to help you, let them help you. Be deliberate to find out exactly what your identity is, what God has called you to do on the face of the earth and his work for you part time. If you do that, you won't have that problem. But as long as you don't do that, somebody said that we, all we have are broken people. You know the problem with broken people? Why would somebody steal two billion dollars? Why would somebody carry one million dollars and put it inside soccer away? No, 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 no. Let's talk about this. What, what do you think is happening to the person? It's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. Lacks understanding. There is a fear of hello. There is a fear. Listen, listen, please, so that we don't make that mistake. There is a fear of poverty that is damaging people that are in rulership. So they think that the more they have, the better they get. The unfortunate thing is that they are not satisfied and cannot be satisfied because they are broken, they are damaged. They need a lot of help, but they don't know that they need a lot of help. That's why they are taking things that they don't need, that things that cannot use. Hmm. Wow. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you. So we'll be rounding up now. I know there are a few more questions. But, um, Pastor, Pastor, should we take any more questions? Okay, we'll be taking two more questions. Pastor has given us a go ahead. So, please, let's take one more. Then, please make your question. Just ask your question. We'll take the two questions at once so that Pastor Bissi will answer them together. Praise the Lord. Please, I just want you to help me discuss the effects of nepotism on leadership. Okay, that's the first question. Please, the second question. Good afternoon. So, Good okay, my question is oh, afternoon. Man, what's the difference with being a leader and being in the lead? That's what I want to know. Okay, thank you very much. Pastor, so 
The truth Go back to you. The truth of the matter is that if I'm going to answer that question, I'm going to have to interrogate your beliefs. That's the truth. It's not a one-size-fits-all answer. So I'm trying to do something now. Somebody just asked a question, what is nepotism? So I wonder, Abby? What's the effect of nepotism? Uh -huh. So uh, that's, what's the effect of nepotism in leadership? Yes. So the question I'm asking is, what is nepotism? Huh? Family members and friends, okay, other yeah. than people that have the ability to do things. Oh, yes. fantastic! So, you have the definition that I have, that means that we're on the same page. Because sometimes, when you don't have the right definition, you can be in, in problem. It's yes. a very big word, and some people are wondering, I've heard nepotism before, I've never checked it before. So, now we have checked it. That talks about patronage bestowed or the favoritism that you show on the basis of family relationship. Now, this is it, and I'm being very, very practical, very, very practical. I said to my younger brothers, my younger siblings a time ago, I said, I'm going to owe you education and that's the end. And never you think that because you're my younger brother, you will get something from me that others cannot get. Simply because you're my younger brother, it will not work. You have to earn it. There's nothing wrong with bringing your younger brother to work with you or promoting your younger brother into a position of leadership. But before you do that, let it be that the person has earned it. I don't have any problem with it. If they can solve the problem, that's okay. But just putting somebody there for the sake of putting somebody there will be very, very wrong. But the challenge again is that when you put somebody that is close to you in some things, you might not be able to take the kind of decision that you need to take. It might actually be affecting your judgment. It might affect your judgment. So you've got to be careful how you do that. But it affects leadership in the sense that it can, let me not say it affects, it can affect leadership, but it depends on your values. What are you, in fact, I, I didn't mention this, but let me just use this opportunity to mention it. As a leader, you must have your core values. You must have your core values. I've heard people say that, ah, when you enter into politics, ah, forget it, you run me. There is no way you will go out of politics and you'll be clean. How many of you believe that? Let's be sincere. Politics is a dirty game. If you enter the place, they will spoil you. They will stain you. It's a fear. Almost you can't everybody leave has. that place. You, you can't clean out from that place. Many people have that belief, but please change that belief. Because that belief will not let you enter, even when God is calling you. And that belief will also compromise you when you get there. Because if you believe that anyone that gets there will be compromised, when you get there, your belief will be compromised. Will you. Check your belief. But the truth of the matter is that if your values are right, there are certain things that people will bring to you that you just say, no, based on my values, I won't do this. Because your values are right. And I think that if you ask me, the major problem that you and I have in this country today is very simple. Our values have gone bad. We've been eroded completely. I've said it before. I mean, this is church, and I said it in church. 10, 20, no, maybe not 10 years. Maybe it was like 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. 40, 50 years ago. You don't need to be in church for you to know that you should not commit fornication. You don't need to. It's just that it, it didn't work. But you have to show, and now everybody has gone quiet. God have mercy. See, when you touch <laughs> it, I always try not to touch this. When you just touch this, everybody just go quiet. But that's just it. And in, those, in that time, they will tell you things like, ah, remember the child of whom you are. Many people don't want to hear that now. Then the next thing you hear is, that, oh, somebody is, stealing was not something that anybody, in fact, in, in a place, I went to a place in Kotonou. They said when somebody steals from that place and runs out, the street people will go and catch him and bring him back. Because they said the place was valuable to them. You can't steal from that place. It was too valuable for them. So our values have gone wrong. And we need to get our values back. If you have the right values, you can't steal government money. It's not that the money is not tempting, but the truth of the matter, your value says no. You won't take it. If you have the right value, somebody provides you bribe. You might be hungry, but you won't take it. Have you seen somebody that is so hungry that you went to eat it? Nobody mm. does that. So you look at wrongs and say, this is shit to me. I won't take it. And let me tell you the truth. You can't steal to be rich. In fact, anybody that steals doesn't have a vision of being rich. Real wealth, you can't find it by stealing. You can even get money, but real wealth doesn't come by stealing. So values, we have to put our values right. How do you treat the second person? How do you treat others? How would you treat, if you have your brother and your, and your, and, and your enemy, and there are two of them are looking for something, and at the end of the day, you know that this person can do the, who, who does the job better? Who will you take? Think of it. And start from now. Who would you take? Will you prefer somebody that, you li that likes you or you like more than somebody that can, can do the job? If you do that, you might be tarnishing the job. 
Yeah, so the person, the second person said, um, "What's the difference between leadership What's and the taking a lead?" Leadership and taking a lead. Leadership and taking lead. Actually, if you take a lead, then you're in leadership. Okay. If you don't okay. take a lead, you're not in leadership. I think that's the. Yes. Thank you very much, Pastor. I this discussion can go on and on, That's and fun. there's so much to learn from from this discussion. So, Pastor, very uh, we're very grateful for having you here. Just on a on an um, on a as we end the discussion, I just want to ask this question. And I need you to answer it in a very short way. Um, if you are in a position where your leader is uh, being ineffective how do you approach that kind of because i know it's a situation a lot of us experience at work in church um in the society in institutions you're in a position where your leader is ineffective and you know that this is is going wrong what do you how do you approach it without being insubordinate or um looking like you are trying to take over the person's position i just i know it's a sensitive um question but sir, just briefly because our time is fast spent Everything has to do with, well, somebody, a, a mentor, says um, everything rises and falls on leadership, mm. which is correct. Somebody has now says everything begins and ends with relationship. If you have a leader ahead of you and the person is ineffective in your own definition, because sometimes your definition might actually be wrong, but even your own definition, you say that that person is not doing it right. I think what you can do immediately, in the immediate is to build the relationship with that person. Because with relationship, you can make a difference. There are certain things that I would do for Pastor K now that I will not do for you. And the reason is very simple. Not because I don't like you, but because he's closer to me so I can understand better. You, I may not be able to. But if you get into that relationship level with him, what do I do? I also consider what you are saying. So relationship matters. Don't, I, I don't know how to say this, but see, you can't fight leaders and, okay, not leaders. Now, you, you can't fight rulers and actually win. But you can help the matter. How do you help the matter? You can actually get close enough to be able to make an impact. That's very important. Make a difference. You can and use relationship to do that one. I mean, thank you, thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor, for everything. I'm sure we've learned a lot, and we have so much that we, we have a lot of assignments. Go and develop yourselves. Build your core values. Ensure that you you in whatever area you find yourself, you exhibit the the attributes of core leadership, of true leadership amongst yourself. God bless you all. Um, I'll call on pastor to come and close this session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, once again.